This segment of the CU Podcast is brought to you by Into the AM. They have premium, high-quality apparel, including nice graphic tees, basic tees, hoodies, and even boxer briefs. Ian is wearing the Bear Grizzly Instincts Bears shirt. on t-shirts. And I'm wearing the Unnatural Forces Glow in the Dark tee. If you want to see me at night, now you can. And they have a bunch of other collections, right, Ian? They do. Uh, there's all sorts of different themes like space, animal, nature. Get yourself some stuff with skulls on it. The shirts are ultra soft, pre-shrunk, tailored fit, and use eco-friendly inks. And Into the AM is running a bundle deal for their graphic tees right now, which are three for 60. And they also have three basic tees for a great discount. Click the link in the description on YouTube, or if you're a podcast listener, use our code C-O-N-T-R-I, Contri, and you'll get 10% off these very comfortable shirts and gear. Go look good and feel good with Into the AM. Rawr! It would not be uh, a podcast at all. If we didn't have... Some in television news, and boy, boy, howdy, do we have some in television news. I mean, where to even start? Uh, There is a potential class action lawsuit uh, pending against Intellivision. Uh, This information comes from the Intellivision underscore Miko Reddit um, from uh, Doctor Who. If you're attempting to get a uh, refund myself and getting nowhere, I decided to file formal complaints with several entities against Intellivision Entertainment LLC, tried to call them out on social media. Um... They have issued a formal deck, so that didn't happen. After an investigation by one of the entities, my state's consumer protection division, they've responded that it appears that Intellivision is headed for bankruptcy. They gave the documents to start a class action suit. Um, It's too early. There's no official documents saying that they are filing for bankruptcy. Um, They have suggested that this person goes to small claims court first. Uh, and they, but they have a contact to the state bar of Wisconsin to proceed and they'll talk about it more in the future. It's interesting. I don't, I, it's too early to say whether that's going to go anywhere. It's too early. You need a certain amount of people to get, to make Mm -hmm. a class action viable. A couple sometimes will not be viable, but from what this person commented is saying, they don't care if they get their money back. If this forces in television, the bankruptcy, so be it. Right. To get on the record that you fucked over people. It's not about the money anymore. But then you got to find a lawyer that's going to go along with it, basically pro bono, because they're probably not going to get much money out of it. But when bankruptcy happens, uh, it goes by order of who's owed the most. So the loan people will come first. Uh, good old Sudesh would probably get his hooks into in television and rip it apart and take control of whatever the hell assets are remaining. I don't know how divided up this LLC is with the original IPs. I think it's a different LLC. But... They made they they got games that were made those those German students from the very very uh, grant those are in television entertainment games yeah someone has the rights to those that were made and licensed so well or someone's going to end up with think. them yes I mean they paid for them to get them made we I don't know if the German government takes them over so there is assets to be found and to be had here right. there is so it's going to take all it's going to take is a. Uh, a handful, maybe 10, 15 people to get a class action going. And you find a lawyer that's going to basically work for free and be like, I'm going to do it and get it going. And that's it. That's all it's going to take. The next thing we got on the list is, I think, kind of a nothing burger just because we all assumed it and knew it. But in television, uh, 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 allegedly never had the rights to Earthworm um jim for there was a article on the gamer by sean murray um, basically goes through all the stuff that we already know about it how it showed basically nothing it was just an animation um <clears throat> but uh they have said now that uh what, what, what was the, the phrase um Latter scenario, they speculate that Intellivision didn't have the rights to Earthworm Jim, which is owned by Interplay and was slapped on the wrist or everything went pear-shaped with the Amico. Interplay decided to call it quits. The latter scenario seems to be most likely. So no one knows for sure. But yeah, I, I mean, knowing Tommy, knowing how fast and loose he played with licenses and things like that, it would not surprise me if there was never any ink on an official uh, 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 Earthworm Jim deal. I wonder if Interplay ever gave him permission to do that fucking mock-up animation bullshit that people thought or was the a real game of art. What I think it is, yeah. is I think Tommy was like, oh, I'm friends with these guys who worked on it, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. We're going to get people excited, and I'll sign the contract well, yeah, later. Details, we'll worry about that later. I'm going to show them just how excited everyone is for Earthworm Jim 4, and they're going to just give me the rights, I think uh, is, you know, that sort of shit. That's Tommy. It's, it's interesting that that happens, but um, that's what uh, you know, manipulators and con men can do. 
they could a sweet talk people that usually have a sense and get in their head like a worm and have them make dumb decisions. That's how cons work. Um, All-star Redditor Gatorus reached out to CEO Phil Adams. I had read about that. It was, I believe, on the <clears throat> the board many, many days ago. I think he got a hold of you and maybe even DM'd me about it. Yeah, but he, basically, you know, he yeah. we, we all had we got the info somehow. He reached out to Phil Adams about porting the Amico games to Steam for free. Under the uh, the catch that the 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 money revenue. made the revenue made from these games would go back to paying off the refund queue to the hundred dollar yeah and more for pre orders right yeah. exactly the pre order queue um and uh, Phil claims he has sold licenses for six figures elsewhere in order to fund completing the hardware and that his licensing deals he's typically looking at six digits because of legal fees and bandwidth. And it's just crazy to me that this guy is still out there trying to put on this business face and ask, act like this isn't just him sitting in a fucking room somewhere looking at bills. Phil Adam. I don't know if Phil realizes where he is with things or doesn't probably fucking care. Probably does not care. He just, he just, you know, he's getting, he got his big salary. He got, remember he got an increase in salary and became CEO. We know he's making, he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of this shit. Yeah. Um, just like everyone, he's just as bad as everyone else. He's on vacation again, isn't he? He's always vacationing. <laughs> Tommy was always on vacation after you know Biggie, like always vacationing. Oh well, we're working hard all the time. We're working uh, twenty hours a day. We no, work hard, we play hard. No, no. That, that's been shown to be no. bullshit. No, it's bullshit. <laughs> he fucked off uh, Phil to Europe. Uh, how insulting! I, I, I mean, I, I want to talk about this in another segment, but what? We're not going to be around forever. And people like this exist. People like uh, Tommy, Mike Kennedy, Phil here, Nick Richards. These people with these grandiose ideas to try to take advantage of people's nostalgia, nostalgia and love of retro games. And even if their hearts are in the right place, only half the time they are, they will do whatever they can to squeeze money out of you. Consequences of failure or or um, miscalculation or incompetence be damned. They're going to get your money and you can go screw yourselves if you ever get what was promised. And I really hope that there's other people out there that hopefully, I think they will will take up the mantle of, of, of pushing back against assholes like this that we've, we've seen over the past almost 10 years do this shit. Whether it's this, Retro Engine Sigma, that little fucking Silver Genesis piece of shit that would catch on mm -hmm. fire, the, the, the fucking Dreamcade guy that got money for an, uh, an illegal emulator console that came after me, you, you challenged me to debate, that's when you were sick, you were on the podcast. Um, there has to be pushback in the community against this shit, or else these vol and people like that are running a lot of games, or else these vultures get their hooks into the community and don't let go. That's all I'm going to say when it comes to that. Yeah. Can't be fucking scared of retaliation. You got one life to live on this shit. I don't give a shit if people came after me because of my thoughts on water or, or uh, the fucking retro engine Sigma or the ch fucking chameleon or, or, or Amico. You, you got, you got to push back. There's bad people out there. This is a bad person. This person does not care about the people who lost their money. Especially doesn't care about the investors that lost their money. He doesn't care about the pre, he doesn't care about anyone. He cares about himself. These people just care about themselves. Am I wrong? Uh, no. Uh, and we'll go right back to that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Tommy's filing responses to the furniture lawsuit. This is some funny shit, and I, we don't have time to read through all of it. But basically, Tommy responded to the lawsuit from the furniture company with 22 or 23 basic boilerplate responses. Just throw shit against the wall. Literally, like this is insane, the amount of things that we're like trying to get to stick here. Uh, a lot of them, you know... I, I would say to the layman, they read kind of similarly, uh, but there were a couple that I wanted to, to point out. Um, one, uh, they say that they have failed to pursue in television um, and television is only one or two people. I, I feel like they probably did not fail to pursue in television. They probably I sent them bills. Anything there. They probably sent them bills. Right. And be and, like, Hey, you're not in compliance with our agreement. Um, and I, yeah, I just don't think that's, going to stick because they can go okay well we'll go after in television filed nothing's there to happen okay now we're going after yes. you um eight 
is uh, one of my favorites along with uh, seven. Let me read eight. Uh, plaintiff's claim against defendant is barred because plaintiff was negligent in its administration what? of financing. Plaintiff's negligence in connection with its administration of financing increased the scope of the defendant's risk beyond the risk that defendant originally intended to assume, if any. What, t what point is it? Point eight. So basically... He's saying, I don't owe you the money because you should have known not to lend me the money. Plaintiff's claim against defendant is barred because plaintiff was negligent in its administration of financing. You gave me too much money. You shouldn't have given me the money in the first place, is his argument. Tommy is saying... You shouldn't have given me the money. You should not have given me the money because of the risk of me not being able to pay it back. Yes. That's so a now he doesn't have to pay it back. Bold fucking move, Cotton. Yeah. Wow, I wish, well, I, could, I, wish I could not pay hold my... Hold on. Okay. Here's another one. This what? is my other favorite. My other no. personal favorite. Lucky what? number 13. Oh, Ready. God. Plaintiff's claim against defendant fails and plaintiff is barred from recovery because any injuries or damages alleged by the plaintiff, if any, were the result of new, independent, intervening, or superseding causes that are unrelated to the defendant's conduct. Any what? actions on the part of the defendant was not the proximate or producing cause of any alleged injuries or damages. What? Plaintiff claims what? the state. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Chip shortage. He's what claiming the chip shortage. What? He's claiming the chip shortage in his response. He's saying that, oh, it's not my fault that I can't okay. pay you back because of X, Y, and Z that was out of my control. He's literally, bla he's, he is, he's blaming COVID and the chip shortage right here. 13. That's what he's doing in 13. You can't blame. That's what he's doing in 13. I can't. I can't. If I get sued by my mortgage company. He's like calling act of God is basically what he's doing. If I get sued by my mortgage company, I can't say, oh, I lost my job and have no money to pay the mortgage. I signed the agreement to pay a fucking loan back. That's how loans work. Okay. Got another one. one Holy more. shit! And this is where I say they kind this of start to like they kind of start to the blur. Uh, re re blur. But uh, seventeen plaintiff is not entitled to recover any damages as a result of any alleged act or omission of defendant. And even if plaintiff has such an entitlement, all or some portion of said damages were caused or attributable to the failure of plaintiff to take reasonable action to mitigate said Wait damages. Minute. Hold on. What? If any, as such, plaintiff is barred in whole and or part from obtaining or securing any damages from defendant, even if defendant is determined or found to have engaged in some unlawful contact or act towards plaintiff, which defendant wholly denies doing. Basically, they're saying you, you again, you deserve it. You, they're, they're, Shame on you for giving me money. Yeah, blaming company. I'm an idiot. And, and, you shouldn't have gave me the money. And they didn't take any get... reasonable action to mitigate said damages. Well, I'm sure they sent you bills and they're suing your ass now. What? It's I, insane. I'm. I am. I Go, am. I, it's full of it. It's like 22 entries that are kind of all like this. And if, if, you, if read these, it, if you want to go insane, it, the, he's literally what it boils down to is I'm an idiot and you shouldn't have lent me money. So it's your fault that you don't have the money and I'm not paying any of it. Tommy, That's how bad this makes him look. Tommy personally guarantee a personal guarantee is if they don't pay for it, it's on me. That's if this lawsuit was to be successful, no loan contracts would matter anymore. Like it would all be crazy. Oh, I can't pay the car uh, be, be, because I don't know. I crashed it. So I don't want to pay for it anymore. Like any argument you can think of would work. Financial, the financial wor world would fall apart based upon these arguments from Tommy Tallarico and his lawyer. Like a personal guarantee is a personal guarantee. That's why it has its weight. Because you guarantee something. A guarantee means you're going to do it. This is insane. Prayer, this is fucking insane. Prayer for relief. Wherefore, defendant Thomas Andrew Tallarico prays for relief as follows. The plaintiff's claim will be dismissed. Plaintiff takes nothing by reason. Defendant be awarded his costs incurring. It. Oh, now he wants the legal fees. He wants the legal fees for not paying his bills. L Los cojones of Tommy Tallarico. We already know, you know, how he tries to get away with this shit. Um, so the people, I looked it up, the lawyer firm uh, for Tommy, the defendant, specializes in like loan contracts and stuff. However, the the, the plaintiff's lawyer, uh, and I wouldn't mess with her. I, 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 she was wearing power pearls in her picture. She specializes in in go, going after people that are non-compliant. So these are the two two sort of specialties. 
I'll just say this, and you brought this up to me over the phone. A company that deals with startups that they know can fail, their contracts are likely iron fucking clad. Yep. Or else they would not yep. be in business. business. Um, because you can't you can't afford to get hosed by a company no. even once if this yeah. is what you're doing. You go out of business yourself, giving out loans. Uh, there was also the without reading it directly, there was the part where he called it a sham sale. He said yeah. he was like, uh, "Well, you charged no. me 180, but you only sold the yeah. stuff for 5,000." That's not a sham sale. I looked this up. Yeah, I looked this up. A reasonable sale of stuff that you reacquired that you then sell. It has nothing to do with the amount that you sell the things for. It's going through the proper procedure to sell them. So say, it's literally, literally just there's a legal procedure. It say, has nothing to do with the amount of money you get back for it. So say someone repossessed, I don't know, a random game, top of my head, never brought up before, Danny Sullivan's Indie Heat. They repo that game and it's worth $1,000 and I can't pay back a loan. They repo the game to sell it. A reasonable sale would just be, well, how do you reasonably sell a game like this? You go to someone that buys these games in general. You go out do a public it's auction. It's the act of the sale. It's the act it of doing it. has nothing to yes. do with the money. It's an act of a sale. It, it, it's, it's like if they put the Danley Sullivan on sale on eBay for a, a public auction, that's a reasonable sale. sale. It doesn't matter if it goes for a dollar, 10 or 20. If they uh, did a sham sale, it would be like, hey, hey, Ian, buy this $100 game for a dollar. And, and then that's a sham sale. So... What someone brought up is great is that how valuable and easy to move do you think this office furniture is in general? This isn't a small collectible. This isn't artwork. This isn't a historical piece. You have to find a very specific buyer for this shit and be lucky if you get a fraction back from the original MSRP. Well, I love how Tommy pretends to not understand how fucking blown up prices are for rich assholes. Like, buddy, you agreed to it. Yeah. They can do whatever they want with their property, which it is their property, which they repossessed from you because you didn't own it. You had it on lease. Yeah. What they end up doing with their property and selling it for is none of your fucking business. And they gave you a credit. It would have been in their interest to sell it for closer to value because they wouldn't have to sue your ass and go through lawyer fees to get the rest back. They would have loved to have been able to resell right. it for the for and, the and, full value. And this this comes down to Tommy's victim complex stuff. Sure. They just want their money. Yes. They don't care how they get it. If yes. they could have sold that office furniture for more, they would have. They didn't sell it for $5,000 to punish Tommy Tallarico because yes. everyone's out to get Tommy. No, they sold it for what they could, and now they want the rest of their money, Tom. They can't sit around for 12 years selling them individual units. How many individual people want a fucking roll-away file cabinet right. with a cushion seat and I just I don't think he understands that, that when he goes through and picks all this shit, it's what he wants at a brand new price. Yes. They don't have space to keep all this shit in. Sure. And honestly, there's a lot of businesses just like Tommy who focus on this stupid shit and they want all the new years and the new models. This is two years out of date now when it comes to yes. you know fancy stuff. All these companies that focus on, this is going to look in an investment video, even though none of this shit's being used. Great. Now it's back in a warehouse collecting dust and this company's owed uh, six figures. Right. They want to get rid of it, recoup as much as they can now. Time and space is money to a company like this. They, 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 that's what a loan company is. It's, 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 it's time. Time is money. And I don't so, like loan companies. And I don't no, like, I, I, I think it's a bad idea to lease your fucking office furniture. I'm just saying this is what it is. Well, no, but loans have to yes. exist for things. Yes. And if you if you put a, I would never be a startup and spend this much on I'm not trying furniture. to defend the money lenders no. is what I'm trying to say. Well, I'm just trying to attack Tommy but, Tellerico and but, point out where it's ironclad that he made these mistakes. And but, the, but the money lender is in the right. Oh, yeah. No, they are. Don't sign a contract. Yeah. For it. Don't do a personal guarantee. And they're suing them both, by the way. But since Tommy personally guaranteed it and signed the loan, you're going to sue him as well. What's the reason why not time to go out to intelligence? Oh, yeah, we, we send you a, a notice. We send Phil Adam in Europe somewhere. We got to find him and serve him papers somewhere in Europe. That's in television. It's Phil Adam at this point. It's him. I should actually. <clears throat> I wonder who they're. Where are they headquartered out of right now? What, I, 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 probably I, California. It's California yeah. still. It's, it's a P.O. box somewhere. Anyway, why you want to go visit the PO box? And no, see I was, I was thinking about something else I could look up, but I'll I'll talk to you later. Okay.